On the 16th of July, 1967, somewhere along Main Street in Georgetown, Alvin Anthony Stuart Wilson was struck down by a Mr. Stobie. He said that Stobie, who was drunk, was at the time a student studying law. Mr. Stuart said that he received a monetary compensation of $5,000 for his injuries. Yes, it's the injury maker got uh, uh, that so. But before I was walking here and Hanuman right in Charles Street, I did live in home and Hanuman Barber still Mr. Stewart, who is now 66 years old, said he was 16 at the time. The incident left him paralyzed on his right side with a mental derangement, a slurred speech, and an inability to read properly. He is complaining that for the last eight years he had been trying to prove that the house at 2116 Nutmeg Street, South Ramvelt, belongs to him. My father gave me a house. He gave me a will and they put in the, the palms and he said he man, my father said he place he never, he ain't get no money or nothing. Alvin Stewart, also known as Golden, is no stranger to the Ghana Revenue Authority the court's records department, nor the mayor and city council. I spent a couple of days with Mr. Stewart trying to understand why he has been fighting this battle for so long and with so much passion. Look, what he will. He showed me a will handed to him by his father. When I visited the registrar's office, they said that the will is indeed valid. The complication, they said, is that his father only owned half of the property. Additionally, the documentation I saw also suggested that his father sold his half of the property after he gave his only son the will. However, Mr. Stewart is contending that if his father did sell the property, how was he able to open the said will after his father died? I pay a lawyer for right the registrar. He said he ain't got no record. Mr. Stewart said he plays. Look, and I got the will. How are you opening the will? Eh? If the man said he pays from the registrar, they say, sorry, Mr. Stewart, don't sell he plays. When I asked the registrar's office to explain this phenomenon, they told me that that was one of the anomalies about this case. They said that that was a mix-up. Mr. Stewart also said that he probated the matter and got the compliance for the property, which he showed me. A property cannot be sold legally without a compliance certificate. I got the witness and I got the proof it, the compliance and the, the violation and got the pay. This is the bogus thing. The man said he never sell the place. He ain't get no money. If he sell it, he got to get compliance. How he get the compliance? I prove it the man, please. When I asked the registrar's office if the property was indeed sold without a compliance certificate, they told me that that was yet another mystery surrounding this matter. The person who claimed to have bought the property from Stuart's dad has the name of a lawyer listed on two of their legal documents. However, Mr. Stuart showed me a letter from the said attorney claiming that he was not the lawyer on that matter. Additionally, the registrar's office noted like Mr. Stewart and I, that the same attorney listed on the two documents have two very different signatures, as seen here. Mr. Stewart said that his father died a pauper in the palms, and whoever put him there also forged the documents claiming that his property is theirs. He said that many people are involved in the scam and he is afraid for his life. But don't anybody know where he lives in, right? Okay. But I tell you, don't show me, I can tell you where he lives in. This thing, this country, you know who's going on. Stuart said that if he gets an attorney to help him, he can get back his property, but he cannot afford a lawyer right now. For Channel 2 Headline News, I am Wendell Jeffrey.